Hey there guys, so today I want to take a look at this mini PC right here that I ended up picking up from AliExpress because there were some aspects of it that really interested me. Now this is a Gen Machine mini PC. Gen Machine being one of those kind of no-name brands from AliExpress and other places like that doesn't really necessarily do model numbers all too well. This is a Ren 5000. Now this little mini PC right here, which I did end up getting in rose gold, and this is a metallic body though. For some reason, and it has like a plastic shroud here that gets scuffed up very easily. Not a fan of that. But overall, the design is pretty nice, though. It is a little dirty right now. Having it in my PC room, there's just a lot of thermal paste around and it does get onto this. But overall, it's a very attractive system. But the reason that I ended up buying it is because of the fact that the chip in here is a pretty interesting one in 2025. This actually has a Ryzen 3 5300U. Now, I know what you're thinking. Why would I care about a Ryzen 3 from the 5000 series, especially all the way in 2025? Well, there's a couple of reasons. For one, the Ryzen 3 line is effectively dead. This is really one of the last Ryzen 3s that ever hit the market before the brand was essentially retired. But even more important than that, it's really the fact that it effectively destroys a bunch of systems like this. This right here is a Geekom Air 12 Lite, and this is rocking an Intel N100 processor. There are systems out there with the Intel N150. All of those are effectively the same thing. The N95, N100, N150, all of those are effectively the same. They're the same architecture, same core configuration, only slight differences in TDP. A lot of the times that can be adjusted in the BIOS anyway. When we're talking about just four cores, four threads, that doesn't necessarily mean much. But with this, we're looking at four cores, eight threads on an architecture that supports dual channel instead of single channel memory and with integrated graphics that aren't completely abysmal. So that's what we're going to be taking a look at today we're going to be comparing this system with this system just so that you can really get in your mind the difference here especially because this comes in at a price point that is very competitive with a system like this now the geekom one here is on the more expensive side but we've all seen n100 and n95 and n150 systems that hover anywhere between 120 all the way up to 220 dollars depending on memory configuration and storage now this one i ended up getting for 160 dollars but that was bare bones, so I had to put in my own RAM and my own SSD in there. But with going with that option, you do have a bit more flexibility, especially because you can go with whatever storage size that you want, but also the RAM configuration is really up to you. You could either go 8 gigabytes, 16 gigabytes, all the way up to 32 or 64 gigabytes if you wanted to, as opposed to something like the Geekom here that really caps out at 32 gigabytes, and that's because it's always single channel. You can never have dual channel, while this, you can have 8 gigabytes gigabytes of RAM and it can be dual channel and that will give you an improvement in performance. So even though the capacity isn't large in that scenario, you at least do get the benefit of that dual channel configuration, something that you just cannot get at all with something like the N series. And look, I understand that a lot of the times it seems like when I do these mini PC videos, it's mostly to crap on those Alder Lake N and Twin Lake N processors, but you have to understand that I just do not feel like these are really worth getting in the year of 2025 going into 2026. And I'll go into more detail onto that later, but for right now, we're going to jump in and we're going to take a look at the performance of this and we're going to see where it lands in comparison to this. We're going to jump into some games just so that you can see a comparison there. And then I'll tell you exactly why I think you should look for something like this instead of something like this. So to start off with the benchmarks, we are going to be taking a look at Rainbow Six Siege X running with the lowest in-game graphics settings, and we are using FSR 2.0 with the quality settings. And here you can see that we're getting very decent levels of performance out of the Ryzen 3 5300U. But it's really when we add in the N100 that you can see the true performance difference between the two systems here, running at the exact same settings. Do keep in mind that I mislabeled the iGPU of the Intel N100. I marked it as 26. 
six execution units when it's actually 24. But that doesn't really matter considering the fact that, again, the performance numbers that we're seeing here are drastically different. Of course, we could go with even more aggressive settings on the N100, but at the FPS that we're getting, we're realistically not going to get this to a playable state in any meaningful capacity. And again, these are two systems that are within the same price tier, and there's a drastic difference in performance. One of these is a playable, though not the most ideal experience for an FPS like this, and the other one is effectively the best PowerPoint you've ever seen in your life. But I will say, though, that the Vegas 6 graphics that we have here aren't exactly the most ideal, especially in the year of 2025. This is a very old architecture that at this point isn't even getting consistent driver updates, and I can promise you there's no optimization that's happening. And while a game like Peak is supposed to be a very lightweight title because it's an indie game with a pretty simple graphics, you'd be surprised how heavy it can realistically end up being. Here we are running with the lowest in-game graphics settings, and I even have the render scale set to the lowest possible. And this is what you have to do to get a playable experience out of this, but it is playable. If this is your only option to play this game with your friends, you are able to do it. I was able to climb up to at least the third level before I ended up falling and dying. And that's way different than how it ran on the Geekom system where there was just no real way to get this to play well at all at the exact same graphics settings. This felt horrific. I was playing with a controller, which was my first time ever really playing with a controller in this game and just trying to look around was a disaster. Of course, I was able to get this to a more playable state, but I had to dramatically drop down my resolution to literally the lowest it's able to go and it wasn't exactly a great experience. So while it is doable, the 1% lows really show that you're pushing the limits of this system here. And I even took a look at a game like Bioshock Infinite running at the medium graphics set settings at 1080p on both systems, and you can see a very drastic difference between the two. The reason I took a look at this title is because with systems like the Ren 5000, what you're able to do is essentially play older titles from the PlayStation 3, Xbox 360, and early PS4 and Xbox One era at relatively decent settings at resolutions that were higher than what was standard back then. You might have had a 1080p display when the Xbox 360 was common, but that Xbox 360 was not rendering games at full 1080p. Here we're able to get it at full 1080p at not the lowest graphics settings, but instead at the medium graphics settings. Something that also the Xbox 360 couldn't really do in a lot of titles. And well, it doesn't seem to be all that different for the N100. Of course, gaming is only part of what these chips can do. Obviously, the CPU also plays a very important part in all of this. And well, if we take a look at Cinebench R23, we can see the numbers for all of these chips. And I'm pretty much lumping together all of the Intel N series that I have access to right now that I've benchmarked so far because we have the Intel N100, N95, and N150. And to no surprise, they score pretty much identically to each other when it comes to CPU performance. And all of this is effectively half the performance of the 5300U, where it's scoring effectively around the same level as the Ryzen 7 7320U, not surprising at all. And when we take a look at single core performance, it also shows that the Ryzen 3 5300 you ends up beating out all of the Intel chips in terms of single core performance. This pretty much overall translates to a better gaming experience and a better day-to-day -day computing experience. And one of the biggest signs of this is one of the things that annoys me the most about these Alder Lake N chips. When things like Windows Update or practically anything is running in the background, you run into a scenario like this where your CPU is pegged at 100% utilization. All four cores are just being maximized just from a Windows update happening and because of this it makes the experience of using the computer really really bad because it's just overloaded immediately and it takes forever to happen. Windows update ended up taking pretty much an hour to finish on this system and it really wasn't all that far behind in updates. Yeah I've had it sitting on the shelf for a little while but all the updates that were happening in general were significantly fewer than what will sometimes end up popping up and well in this scenario it still ended up taking a lot of time and if you were trying to use the system while this is happening you're gonna have a bad time. 
In fact, the main reason I ended up using the Geekom system is because the system that I have with the N150, uh, it ended up taking forever to update. Here you can see that Windows Update is only downloaded 6% of this update. The CPU is seeing high utilization, though not maxed out. And it has taken over three hours for this to happen, as you can see in this point in the video. I left it sitting there for six hours. What kept on happening is that it kept on giving me an error at some point, and I'd have to restart the download process. And once it happened the third time, I pretty much just gave up on it. The numbers are pretty much the same. The system does have 16 gigabytes as opposed to the the 8 gigabytes that are in the Air 12 Lite, but at the performance that we're having here, that's not going to make a difference, at least in terms of things like gaming or in Cinebench. So I don't think that it really matters that it only had 8 gigabytes as opposed to 16. I've tested these chips plenty of times, and I can tell you that no matter what the configuration is there, you're not going to get good gaming performance, and that comes down to the single channel memory. So after all that benchmarking, what can we say about this system? Well, uh, as you can see, it is still very competitive in the market They're essentially beating out all of its competition in equally priced scenarios now when i picked this up i picked it up for 160 but that's bare bones so you're still gonna have to buy the ram and the ssd you can also pick those up from aliexpress very cheap right now so you could put together this system at a comparable price to systems like this and you saw the performance difference now here's the thing windows update is actually a very multi-threaded task even in this system when i was running windows update all all eight threads were being pushed to their maximum speed. And while that might seem like an issue in both of these systems, the benefit was that with all eight threads of this, it ended up finishing significantly quicker. I'm talking about maybe waiting 20 minutes at most. While with this one, it was still over an hour waiting for it to update. And look, this isn't download speed because again, I have a gigabit connection. It's literally just the install process of everything, multiple drivers being updated, but this finished significantly significantly quicker and also as it's updating you can use the system because not all sections of the windows update are going to push all eight threads to their maximum at all times so as you're trying to just watch videos or browse the internet or do whatever it is that you're doing on your system this having those extra threads those eight threads to go along with four cores it really helps out to make the experience of using this significantly better especially because we also have dual channel memory here this is System, while Windows Update is running is very difficult to use. You try to open up a web browser and it takes forever. You try to load up anything, it takes forever because the CPU is fully loaded and this thing reaches 100% CPU utilization significantly quicker than this. And look, the thread difference is already one thing, but as you saw with the Cinebench numbers, the individual cores themselves on this are slower than this. So even in individual tasks that are just using one to two cores, this is going to beat this out. And you have so much more headroom left here. And look, I understand that systems with the N150 and Alder Lake N and Twin Lake N in general are very popular. I get that. But you really, really should consider something like this over those chips because of the fact that this provides a significant uplift in performance at the same price. Yes, you're gonna have to open this thing up. It has the screws down here. It does come with these rubber feet. You have to manually install yourself after you're done. I obviously haven't installed them yet because I plan on taking this thing apart after I'm done because I do have plans on using this system for a specific project, but I need to change out the RAM and the SSD in here. But look, the IO itself is fantastic. It's pretty comparable to any Alder Lake N system. You're not necessarily losing out on pretty much anything in this scenario. In fact, this comes with a USB-C port, which is something that you don't find in any Alder Lake N systems, at least not any of the common ones that I've seen. In fact, I don't think any of the systems that I've had with Alder Lake N or Twin Lake N have uh, have had a USB-C port. I'm, you know what? I'm actually gonna go check that right now just to be sure. Okay, I actually did find one, that being this Morphine system. I think it's called the M9. Yeah, the M9S. This has a Alder Lake N. I believe it's the N305. And this does actually have a USB-C port in the front, but of course this is a higher end chip, essentially doubling the amount of cores that are in this. I do want to compare this with this system, and that is planned uh, later on, but a problem that I'm having right now is that this specific system 
system has a, an, an unfortunate quirk to it where while it uses USB-C for power, it uh, it needs the power brick that it came with. You know, I normally don't even bother using the included power bricks for systems that I'm going to be testing. Obviously, I check if the original cable even works because, you know, you never know when a company's going to send you a lemon and I'd rather know that. But once I get it set up in my testing area, I do use a USB-C charging station that I power all my devices off of. And uh, this system has a weird quirk where it needs the original power brick because of the fact that the original power brick is essentially a very bad USB-C charger because it only does the required voltage of this 12 volts at three amps. So if you have any device that needs less than it, it will kill it. So keep that in mind if you do pick up a system like this. In all honesty, I don't recommend it. That is such a terrible design. But also because of that, if I use my charging station where, you know, the system itself is supposed to tell it, hey, I need this much voltage, it doesn't do it properly. So the system will shut off after any kind of load on it because it's not getting enough power essentially. So pretty major compromise there. In general, the performance of these is just not comparable to this. Maybe this could close the gap. I really doubt it because this thing is scoring double the performance of these. So maybe double the cores will be able to close the gap there, but we're still going to be behind in single thread performance. But I can't even test that because I got to find the original cable for it. So once I do, I will do potentially a video on it. I'm not 100% sure if it's just such a blowout between the two. I don't think it's worth it. But I think that as of right now, at the price point that this thing is selling at today, this is the mini PC to go with if you're on the budget side. There are different colors. You don't have to get this pink one. I just went with the pink one because it looked interesting to me. It is an all metal design. Is it the highest quality system? Of course not. Of course not. At the price point that it's at, there's no way it's going to be. But this right here, this, uh, this B-Link system that is an extremely popular unit is also made of all plastic. It doesn't feel super high quality, but people are buying these a ton while this is an all metal construction except for the bottom where this is plastic. So all the sides and everything are metal and it feels really nice in the hand. Now that's not the case all the time with Gen Machine there. A while back, I did pick up this system that is based on an original Ryzen APU. And uh, while this is also a horrible design because it's just suffocating the fan that's in there and it really can't breathe, it's also just all plastic. It feels very cheap. It's not exactly a very high quality system. This on the other hand, while being barely any more expensive, is really well built. Really, really well built. I like the construction of it. The performance is really great for the price. I genuinely think that if you're in the market for a budget mini PC in 2025, this is where you should look. You have a more powerful iGPU, you have a more powerful CPU, you have better expandability and better construction. The only system that I think is built better is this Geekom one. This thing is built really, really well and it's really the only reason I like this system in general. I think that the IO layout is really great, but in general, it's the construction, it's the fact that it feels really premium for what it is, is nice but this feels nice and it performs better by a significant margin. So unless the pure construction factor of this being better than this is enough to sell you on it, there's just no reason to touch any of these systems in comparison to this. So do yourself a favor and pick this up if you're in the market for it. Check out the links down below to AliExpress. But anyways, I will catch you guys in the next one.